one of the additions to Unity 3.0 is the addition of uh, a whole host of awesome image effects or post-processing effects that we can apply to the camera in our scene to make our game look exactly the way that we want it to look. Now, in previous versions of Unity, we did have image effects, and just a side note here, image effects, again, that's a pro-only feature, so you need to have Unity Pro to be able to use image effects. And image effects are basically post-processing effects that we can apply to a camera, and it's one of the last things that renders out, and it can change our camera or the view of our game in a whole bunch of different ways. So, let me give you some examples of, of what they are. Um, games like Killzone 2, Gears of War, um, Assassin's Creed, a whole bunch of different games, the top AAA next-gen titles out there use post-processing effects to do all kinds of things. So what kind of things do they do? They add things to your game like depth of field, uh, motion blur, color correction, uh, different types of color filters to make things grayscale or sepia tones. There's a whole bunch of different things that we can do with image effects. Unity 3.0 takes it to a whole new level. The image effects available are so great, so awesome, and there's so many of them that we can literally make an unlimited number of combinations as to the look of our levels. Okay, so enough talk about it. Let's actually start using it. Um, there's a lot in post-processing effects. I want to cover a lot of post-processing, so I'm breaking up this uh, chapter here into several videos. Uh, here in the first one, we're going to learn the basics of it and learn how to get it working here. So image effects are applied to the camera in our game. We won't be able to see image effects through the scene view. We have to use the game view over here to be able to see image effects. Okay. So to make it a lot uh, easier for me to work with image effects, instead of switching between scene and game view, you know, scene view to work and then game view to see the results, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layout options and I'm going to change my layout to a 2 by 3 That's going to allow me to see the scene view and game view at the same exact time. So I can make edits in my uh, scene view over here and then I can just see the changes inside of the game view which will help me work a little bit faster and obviously a lot easier. Now currently there's a problem in my scene that I need to address. Okay, When, you, when I created this scene brand new uh, several videos ago at the beginning of this tutorial series one of the only things that was created automatically for me was a main camera. Okay, When you create a brand new scene in Unity, Unity creates an empty scene and only one object exists by default, which is the main camera. If I go here to my hierarchy view, I can see that there is a main camera. Since I already have a camera in the scene, the one that's being used with my uh, character controller, I don't need this main camera. Okay, So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to highlight it hit the lead on the keyboard, get rid of that. So I only have one camera in the scene, which is this camera right here. It's the camera that belongs to the first person uh, character controller over here. Okay. Now the way image effects works are pretty simple. You have to select the camera that you want to apply the image effect to, and then you can uh, apply the image effect to the camera because that's how it works. Image effects or post-processing effects are applied to the camera. Now to apply it, one of the simplest ways is to select the camera, come up to the component main menu option up here, Go to the image effects section. Again, you have to have Unity Pro or else you won't be able to use this. And then we have this menu here with a lot of different image effects that come already with Unity 3. So we don't have to program or code any of this stuff. It all comes included in Unity 3 Pro. Because there's so many image effects, I'm not going to go over every single one because each one can be used in different ways and each one has its own separate settings. Uh, what I will tell you is that there's so many image effects right out of the box that we can make an unlimited amount of different types of styles and looks to our game okay so what I'm gonna do is over the next several videos I'm gonna go over um, some of the image effects that well in my opinion I chose to show because these are image effects that are gonna make your game truly look next-gen and it's gonna give it that triple-a type of flair okay so um, one of the best image effects and one of the new ones inside of unity 3 is the bloom and flares effect so I'll select it now when I apply this to my main camera unity is gonna go ahead and tell me that I'm gonna lose the prefab so I'll just hit add that's fine I don't care about losing the prefab there As soon as I add that you notice there's a slight change here in my scene if I turn this on and off by unchecking it you'll see here's the before and here's the after you can see it we have this sort of uh, a bloom effect on anything that's bright so basically things that are bright in the scene 
are going to be brightened up using this effect. Okay. Now we have a couple of different settings we could choose. We could choose the simple mode, or we can choose the advanced mode. Okay. I like using the advanced mode for everything I do. Just it gives me a lot more control. But uh, if you don't like working with too many parameters, you can switch to the simple mode. It gives you a little bit less parameters. Okay. So um, we have some parameters here, like the intensity, for example. Intensity allows us to basically intensify the effect. So if I intensify this by quite a bit, you can see here that the, uh, the effect becomes very, very bright over here. We can see that areas that are bright, like the specularity on the asphalt here on the street, the parking lot and whatnot, becomes very bright, gets this kind of bloom type of effect. And if you want, you can play test this and run around in your scene and see how the effect works with uh, bright areas and you can see here as I look at bright areas I get these internal lens reflections inside the camera which uh, gives a really really cool effect and can make your games look uh, that much more polished it's kind of that internal lens reflection that you see uh, in a lot of Hollywood movies and things like that it's something that you want to add to your game there you can really see that internal lens reflection right there see that as I look around that adds a lot of detail and makes your games look a lot more polished. So let's see how we can control some of these effects. Uh, one of the biggest ways to control this is using the alpha mass parameter, which is down here. Right now it's set to 1. If I take this down to 0, what's happening is I'm not using any type of alpha channels to control the effect, the bloom and the flare effect. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, more in a moment. Let me adjust the intensity here. Go something something like this, not too much. What I'm doing now is that I'm applying uh, I'm applying an intensity to the entire scene um, without using any alpha control. So basically, everything in the scene is going to have an even effect. This effect is going to evenly uh, affect everything in our scene based on how bright it is. So you can see the sky is pretty bright, so we get a very bright flare effect. It looks almost like a nuclear bomb went off in the background. And these objects here are obviously too bright, so we need to tone this down and fix it up. But this is just to kind of illustrate what the bloom and flare effect does. The blur spread down here in the blur iterations, that's just going to uh, control the blur. So if I take the blur down, you can see that the effect doesn't look that great. It looks too sharp, which is not what you want most of the time. So you can increase the blur iterations to kind of soften that up. Okay, And you can use the blur spread to do just as the name suggests. You can uh, spread out that blur a little bit. So if you take that down all the way, you're going to get uh, an effect that looks like this. It's very sharp and defined on the edges, which is not very good. So you want to blur that out a bit. The default settings work pretty good. Threshold is going to help you control that the brightness, uh, how far blown out this effect gets, or how dim it becomes. So a threshold somewhere around the middle right here works out pretty good, but you have full control. The alpha mask is a very interesting effect, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Let me look at cast lens flares. Uh, lens flares are just as the name suggests. You can cast lens flares in the camera. Um, for example, if I turn that off and I jump into the game, and I look at bright areas like the sky, you'll notice that I no longer have those cool internal lens reflections or lens effects on the camera. I don't have those uh, lens flares. Let me turn that. Let me go back here and turn that back on. The intensity, of course, allows you to control the intensity of the lens flares. The threshold lets you control. It's just an extra control for the intensity. It lets you control the threshold of that intensity. Okay, So you can play with that to increase or decrease the effect. And this is very interesting. We have some modes down here. We have a ghosting mode, which is the current default one. And then we have this Hollywood mode. And the Hollywood mode is pretty interesting. Let me go ahead and jump into the scene here and show you what it does. Let me go inside and look at some really bright areas. You notice the difference? If I look at things like light sources and really bright areas, I get this kind of streaking effect that goes horizontal across the screen of the game. Okay? This is kind of similar to what you see in a lot in a lot of Hollywood movies. Those kind of streaking horizontal lens flare effects that you see. Uh, a good uh, you know example of a movie that did that a lot, the old Aliens movies. Uh, the first Die Hard movie did that a lot. So there's a lot of movies that use that kind of effect to create some nice dramatic kind of lens flares. And you can use that using the Hollywood mode. If you like both modes, you can use the combined mode, which I actually like. And you can combine those two together. 
let me just before I continue here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first person controller and I'm gonna move it inside of the warehouse this will allow me to troubleshoot and be able to see stuff as I change it in real time which makes it obviously much easier for me to be able to see the changes that I'm making so right now the effect is very very strong which is not exactly what I want so let me go back to the main camera I'll go back to ins uh, inspector over here and the stretch width right here that I was uh, t uh, where I left off on I can take this and I can reduce this if I don't like that streaking effect and I want to reduce it I can do that or I can increase it if I want so I have full control right there so I'll decrease it a little bit I don't want it to be too exaggerated and I can control the blur iterations on that having some blur uh, makes it look good then we have these four colors that we can use to control the effect okay so if we take the uh, these kind of bluish purples we can change them to greens see how it changes right there in my viewport in the game viewport so you have full control over these uh, lens flares using all of these controls over here okay so you can change the colors customize it so that way no two games will look alike you can totally customize this to give your game a specific type of look okay so that's uh, those are the settings now let me just go ahead and fix this up to make it look good now the alpha masking is extremely important what alpha masking does it allows you to have full control over which objects in the scene can use the bloom effect okay the bloom is that glow that you see on bright objects or bright areas of the scene so the way this works is using this alpha mask parameter you can crank it all the way up and now the alpha channels in our scene have full control so what do I mean by the alpha channels in our scene well let me take this guy here let me move it close to these crates over here see these crates that are really blown out they look almost like they're radioactive or something like that I'm gonna come in here in my uh, scene view and I'm gonna select the crates and I'm gonna look at the shader okay if you look at the main color we have this color swatch here that's kind of like a light gray and then just below it there's this kind of white strip of color and the specular color is the same thing we have a mid gray and then this white strip of color underneath that little white strip of color is not there for no reason it's actually there to represent the alpha value so if I click on say main color and I look here I have an HSV and an A slider the H is for hue S is for saturation V is for value the A is for alpha right now by default the alpha is all the way up because I turned on the alpha masking on the bloom and flares effect on the camera I can use this alpha parameter to control how bright or how dim the uh, flare effect or the uh, the bloom effect is going to be on that specific object or that specific shader so I have full control over individual elements of my scene by using the alpha channel that's why I recommend that when you're using um, this bloom and flares effect to go ahead and turn on the use alpha mass parameter to one so that you can have complete control over your scene and the effect doesn't kind of run amok and do whatever it wants you have complete control over it so for example if I want to take those crates and I want them to have maybe a little bit of bloom I can add just a little bit and then that's it whatever I think is appropriate or I can take it off completely if I think that's appropriate too so the trick is to go into your scene go to these individual shaders find anything that is overly bright and then tone down its alpha channel and if you need to tone down the alpha channel more you could if your shader uses a specularity channel you can take the alpha of the specularity and knock that down too. I don't recommend that though. I find that the best option is to take the main color and knock the alpha down right there. Now, there are some tricky situations. Let me show you this before I end this video because this will most likely happen to you and I want you to know how to get out of this kind of a jam that could happen to you very easily. Okay? Um, let me go here and take... Oh, I actually made a mistake here. I took the camera and I moved it. Let me go to the position on the camera and set it to zero, zero, and zero. Whenever you move the camera around, don't move the camera. Move the first person controller, but not the camera. You don't want to move the camera because then you're going to pretty much ruin it and break the camera. So don't move the camera around. Make sure you move the first person controller. So you can see right here, I kind of messed up my camera uh, by moving it around. So let me set it to, to zero. Now I'm going to have to move the camera up a little bit so I can get the height of my fake character. Okay. So always move the first person controller, not the camera. Okay. So 
now that I'm looking in my scene here, I can see bright areas and fix that. Uh, an area that might be overly bright might be something like these uh, trash piles over here. So that can end up being a problem. But if I try to change the alpha on this, I'm going to mess it up because remember the alpha channel is controlling the transparency. So you can't change the alpha here. So a way around this is to change the main color. If I increase the brightness of the main color, you can see here in the in the game view how it becomes very bright and glows like it's uh, I guess nuclear material so you can change that main color and drop it so you have a little bit of a bloom effect but not too much so um, that's pretty much gonna do it for using this effect right here okay you can achieve some pretty good uh, kind of effects. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this video here and off camera I'm going to adjust these settings uh, based on what I showed you you know the blur iterations intensities and stuff I'm gonna go around in my scene and individually set the alpha values for my objects. I'm gonna find objects that are too bright. For example, if I take the first person controller, see how the fence is way too bright, it's glowing. The wall is glowing too, those background buildings are glowing. This wall over here on the left is also glowing. Uh, we have some serious problems here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use the technique that I just showed you. I'm gonna select the individual objects like this wall for example take the uh, alpha channel of the main color and drop it so I'll select other things like this wall over here and I'll do the same thing I think you get the idea so try to do that on your own go around the scene try to find things that are uh, too hot or too bright and tone them down using the alpha controls and then when you're done with that try going back to the main camera and controlling the bloom and flare effect play around with these settings and see what you can come up with 